This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to more Miles Edge Face Attorney Investigations. Prosecutors. Uh, today we're still it's on Forgotten Turnabout. In part one. And part one. It's time for It's time for Granny's testimony. Error in the autopsy report. Her hair is the same size as her grandchild's head. Yeah, it is. There are no mistakes in Granny's autopsy reports. I've been working with corpses longer than you've been alive. There's no way I'd make a mistake in writing the autopsy report. Ouch! I got nothing to gain from falsifying the autopsy report. Is what she says. See, there's nothing strange at all. Yes, yes, that's right, you know. There's no way she would falsify it, you see. What would he look like without his beard? Would he have the fattest face? Because, <laughs> like, you know how sometimes, like, beards may are a little slimmy? When you have, like, uh, a what? weird... Like, kind of, they make your face look smaller. Because, like, obviously there's hair covering part of his face. Otherwise, that's, like, the tiniest face with a skull. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Under the name of the goddess of law, do you swear that this testimony is the truth? Nope. <laughs> of course! Granny would never tell a lie. We were asking Dr. Yun. We do not need to hear from a third party. I'm not a third party. I'm on Granny's side. If you raise an objection to my testimony, you'd best prepare yourself, you ex-prosecutor. I will definitely expose the contradiction in the autopsy report. How does she know that? Fiddle dee dee. There are no mistakes in Granny's autopsy reports. Except that one time <laughs> where she wrote her name as Fred instead of Bonnie. <laughs> Is that what she did? No. Freddy, Bonnie, FNAF. Oh. Waka waka do wop oh. yeah. That was kind of a dumb joke, sorry. FNAF. So you're saying there is no way Dr. Yun could have made a mistake? Of course. Doctors can't afford to make mistakes. That's what case two from the second game taught us. Yep. This is a world where just one misdiagnosis can end a long career. I know that my granny, at least, would never... If I did something like that, you'd think they'd still let me run a hospital? <laughs> Who has two phones does give a crap. Bob Kelso. I've been working with corpses longer than you've been alive. I like how she looks whenever she talks for her granny. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> So in your long career, you've never once made a mistake? A doctor's only as good as the length of their track record. Heh. <laughs> if we're just talking about a lengthy track record, that former chief prosecutor has one too. And yet, his actual abilities don't seem to measure up. I hope that you're not the same as well. <laughs> Ouch. That's a low blow, you know. <laughs> but you know, Edgeworth, I don't make mistakes either, you see. Because, you see, before I can make a mistake, those around me will have already made it instead. You see, I don't have time for mistakes. It's quite amazing, you know. It must be karma. Y yeah, shut up. <laughs> You can't compare a chief prosecutor with a judge. A, a, a with a judge. <laughs> with a doctor. You really can't. I just found frosting in my fingernails, and that was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> was it? Yes. Oh my gosh, we I just realized we can watch her get smacked in the head over and over again. <laughs> Ouch! The victim wore this raincoat after suffering a blow to the head. And yet, there was not a single drop of blood on the front of the raincoat. Therefore, it is impossible for the head wound to have been post-mortem. Um, well, that's- Ow! I don't need you to tell me that! That's what I wrote down from the very beginning! The autopsy report says the head wound was post-mortem. That's completely different! Yeah. I relate to Karen what to put down on the autopsy report. After that, it was none of my beeswax. Relayed to Karen. Please elaborate on that. Oh, she is she trying to throw her granddaughter under the bus? Absolutely. <laughs> Do you think that Bonnie's the one who did it? <laughs> I think that... Or she's like in cahoots, maybe. Maybe. 
I think that there's definitely something fishy, and that's why I was like, you know, we haven't seen these two in a while. Mm -hmm. That's suspicious. I would like to verify once again what you saw when you examined the body. Uh, like we said, ow! Ooh. Well, about that, she was done in by the thump to her noggin. Dr. Young, do you know when that happened? Before she died, of course. The wounds on her chest were post-mortem. That's what I relayed to Karen. Oh, wait, that's what I relayed to Karen, so that's what should have been written in the report. If it's in double quotes, that means it's yeah. Bonnie talking. That's what you relayed to her, eh? I am finally beginning to see the truth. Boop, -do -do. I got nothing to gain from falsifying the autopsy. You may have nothing to gain, but how about your granddaughter? Me? There isn't anything I could gain. If Karen had done something to gain, then that girl of yours might have something too. How dare you accuse my little girl who's never done any harm to anybody? Yeah, aren't you ashamed of yourself? She should address those words to Blaze instead of me. I swear that the autopsy report wasn't falsified! I under okay, so I understand if, like, Dr. Yun can't talk, but can she not write either? I don't know. She looks like Egad's grandmother. Did you notice anything strange about when you were performing the autopsy? I wonder... Huh? What is it, Granny? A strange man came by. Who are you calling strange? He wore some really strange clothes. He even had a frilly thing around his neck. <sighs> even though he was about to get canned, he still tried to run amok during my autopsy. I'm talking about you, you frilly little brute. Ah, uh, I see. So Mr. Edgeworth's a strange frilly red brute. Kay, please don't only remember odd things about me. Um, it doesn't look like Granny's lying. Hmm. Mrs. Jensen is the one who is relaying Dr. Young's words. I'll have to confirm whether or not Miss Jensen is telling us the truth. Yeah. Alright, well, autopsy was forged. Oh, was that the wrong statement? Oh, come on! No, because after that, it was none of my beeswax is the added thing, so you would use something different, right? You relayed everything to Karen. Yeah, but the autopsy report, we have the... Oh, is it is it the raincoat? No? I thought we were just presenting the problem with the autopsy report. Nothing strange at all. Try that one. The fact that we added on the statement tells me that that's probably the one we have to press. Right. So, maybe it's... We present Karen's profile. We can't present profiles. Oh, maybe it's presenting, um... No... Um... I wonder what we are supposed to present here. Yeah, I, like, it made it Maybe. sound like, oh, this is where we present the autopsy report. Because I think, logically, if we present every type of evidence... Oh, wow, the music just didn't go away right away. Oh. So we had it right... Okay, wow. So we were stuck on that for a while, because apparently we had to wait, like, two seconds for the, for music, the music to actually to go away. That, that's kind of dumb. Dr. Yun, please confirm what this autopsy report says with your own eyes. Ah, I'll read it out for you. Now! This autopsy report wasn't written by me! What? What? What do you mean? Ooh, snap! <laughs> I don't know! But Granny, I, I can't see that! I can't swear! This is a kid's game! Not really. <laughs> Miss Jensen, if you are trying to keep the truth in the dark, then... In place of the Goddess of Law, I shall hear your confession. Judge Courtney is talking with Dr. Yun in private. What is the truth? 
Understood. I shall convey your words to everyone else, Dr. Young. I properly relayed the autopsy report orally to that child. It seems my granddaughter must have mucked it up when she was writing it down. Wow! She mimicked her voice perfectly. No, she didn't. She totally didn't. There was no need for her to go that far, though. In other words, the contents of the autopsy report had been falsified. By your hand, Miss Jensen. But the are sweating. I... With that, we've proven that the wound on her he head came first, followed by her chest wound. Miss Jensen, why did you falsify this autopsy report? Hold on a second. She never said she falsified it, you know. She just made a teeny tiny mistake when she wrote it down. Postmortem and anti-mortem sound kinda similar, you know. They are complete opposites! That is the very definition of falsification! Miss Jensen, why would you lie? K ow! I want you to tell me too, why would you do something like that? Granny, but I... Because you falsified the autopsy report, K fell under suspicion. Tell me why you did it. I, I can't say. I just can't say it. Not I don't want to say it, but I can't say. You're all a bunch of bullies, you know. You have the testimony called because I'm, I'm going to bully, bully you. <laughs> Gating up on this poor girl who just loves her grandmother so. Uh -uh. She is totally unrelated to this. I think we can forgive her for one tiny mistake. No. That won't do. Aren't you the one with the most to lose if she testifies? Hmm? <laughs> what are you saying? You see, as a former prosecutor, you'll have to speak a little more clearly, you know. Very well. As you wish, I shall answer clearly. Miss Jensen played an essential role in this case. She was the true culprit, she was the victim, she was an accomplice. I think an accomplice would be the obvious one. Miss Jensen falsified the autopsy report in order to assist the true culprit. Uh, ow! <laughs> this girl is an accomplice. What's your basis for that claim? It was impossible for a single person to commit this crime in the first place. Yeah, this is too complicated to be one. The crime could not have been committed without at least two people, namely because the victim couldn't have been moved, the number of people wouldn't match, the report could not have been faked. Is it all of these? Because the number of people would not match, so she could go in and fill in for a person. The victim could have been moved, it could not have been moved without that person as well. And then also, the third one, it, what was it? Um, the report could not have been falsified. Yeah, she would have been the one to falsify it. It's the second one, though, where the number okay. of people were off. If the conductor was the culprit and one of the auction guests was the victim, it would contradict the witness's testimony that there were 11 people after the incident. What now? You got a problem with my testimony? Not at all. Rather, it is because I believe your testimony, that's why an accomplice must exist. So you still won't admit that your reasoning is wrong? Up until now, we had not even considered the possibility of an accomplice. However, if there had been an accomplice, it changes the entire story completely. If the accomplice took the murder to auction guest's place, then the number of people remains 11. Oh, I see now. So that's what you're thinking. But you know... Wouldn't that have been quickly discovered? Miss Jensen and the victim have similar physiques. If she wore the victim's mask, she could have easily taken her place. Miss Jensen, did you switch places with the victim? Uh, I... I wouldn't... Who was the conductor? In other words, tell me who was the true culprit. I, I can't. I mean, that would also cause trouble for Granny. But, Granny... I will accept whatever wrongs you may have done. Just tell me everything. G -g -g Granny! As I thought, it appears you really were the accomplice. Miss Jensen, why? Miss Jensen? Would you please tell us? Yes, 
Wow, her hair went up perfectly. <laughs> it's okay, Granny. I'm fine now. I switched places with the victim, Miss Crane. So you admit to being the conductor's accomplice? Yes. I helped out the conductor. I don't really know why, but for some reason... The conductor was expecting to be attacked by Miss Crane. The conductor expected an attack from the victim? They were so sure it was going to happen that they came up with a plan to counter it. A way to beat the victim at her own game. And that's why I was called in. I was told to wait in the storeroom before the auction began. Whoa there! You ain't fooling my eyes! If you were waiting in the storeroom, I reckon I would have bumped into you. After all, I've been up in that storeroom the entire auction. I'm telling the truth! I wonder about that, you know. Can we really believe a girl who would falsify a report? Heh. <laughs> there should have been many places to hide in that storeroom. The trunk. Then by all means, tell me. Where did our little nurse hide? The place in the why? storeroom where Miss Jensen hid was... The trunk. Also, why didn't... Why wouldn't she just... Uh... She hid inside this costume trunk because it needs to be a challenge, Marty. Oh, man. A costume trunk, eh? Ah, now you mentioned it, that box was already there before I snuck in. I figured I would hide in there myself, but it was wrapped up nice and tight with a chain. And it was locked, too, so I had to give it up. She went into a locked... Oh, that was risky. <laughs> no, she she was an accomplice, so I'm guessing they put her in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, and locked her in locked That's her in still there. risky, though. In case, like, what if the conductor was like, See ya, I'm not letting you out. <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> she probably got paid handsomely. <laughs> That's true, you saw that big, fat suitcase filled with cash. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and I get huge amounts of paper cuts from counting my matching right, stacks of money. money. <laughs> <laughs> what is that from? Uh, Phineas oh, that's Phineas that's right. Candace uh, O's. I suspect that when you sneaked into the room, Miss Jensen was already inside the trunk. Yes. It would have been bad if one of the guests from the auction had opened the lid. After instructing me to hide inside, the conductor wrapped a chain around the costume trunk. I think they went downstairs using the lift shortly thereafter. It was right before the auction. So then... When the auction began, only you and Miss Hart were in the storeroom. Yes, that should be right. The auction had been going on as usual, but... When a certain participant made the winning bid, the conductor committed the crime. Miss Hart must have heard the altercation that occurred then. You betcha! I was trembling behind that there statue the whole time, though! Following the altercation, Jill Crane was murdered. I gotta say, a lot is better in this case than in a lot of others. She's a lot more competent. That's some She's good. competent. We don't have to cross-examine her. She's, she actually has, like, serious guts, and she's not in it that much. That's mostly because she's been in, what, like, three or five murder cases? She's... Okay, How the many? only case... The only cases she's appeared in are the Gord Lake case, the Crane Village case, and then the kidnapping case. And technically, she had, like, a two-second cameo in the Embassy case, but, like, she wasn't actually a character. Yeah. Following the altercation, Jill Crane was murdered. <sighs> After killing Jill Crane, the conductor carried her body to the costume trunk. And Miss Jensen, who had been hiding in the trunk, was made to take Miss Crane's place. The victim's body was placed inside the costume trunk. The conductor then took Miss Jensen, who had been made to look like Jill Crane, and returned to the auction hall as if nothing had happened. Was this roughly what happened in the storeroom during the incident? Yes. That's right. Pulling the old switcheroo with one of the auction guests. Ain't that impossible? That gal and the murder victim are two completely different people, you know? Don't you reckon one of the other participants would have noticed and caused a ruckus? No, not at all. The reason they didn't notice the switch was because... She stole the victim's clothes, she used the victim's name. She acted like the victim. Obviously it's that third one. Um uh, uh, Did she steal the victim's clothes? From what I can tell, Miss Jensen and the victim appear to have a similar physique. Furthermore, there was a rule requiring a mask to be worn during the auction. If their clothes were the same, I doubt anyone would have noticed she was a different person. Yes, I blended right in. I borrowed Miss Crane's clothes and ow! You mustn't embarrass the dead like that. I know. 
I also thought it was pretty heartless to leave her exposed like that. So when the conductor wasn't looking, I covered her up in the raincoat that was up for auction. So she was the one who put the red raincoat on the victim. And then the auction resumed as if nothing had happened. I reckon I took the picture of her in the red raincoat after that. Was she wearing any pants? Uh, maybe it's a big raincoat. <laughs> okay. That'd make all the line facts line up. After I took the photo, I went over to the lift to sneak a peek down below. I witnessed the 11 participants and then I hightailed it back behind the statue. Don't tell me you were hiding there the entire time until we found you? Nah, that's... How should I put it? What is it? Did something happen? <laughs> I didn't mention it before, but after that I might have dozed off a little. To be more precise, I fainted? Well, something like that. S so something did happen? It ain't no big deal. C kinda embarrassing to say, though. There was this huge thump sound all of a sudden. I was a little surprised by that. It was right after I just witnessed a murder, so I wasn't in the bed. I was shaking in my boots. My heart sort of tightened up, and I was off to La La Land. When I woke up, it was already the next day, around the time you all came by the storeroom. I see. So there was a large sound. Miss Hart, I take it you do not know what had transpired in the storeroom beyond this point? I, I guess, but after the auction, all the masks were properly returned. So I reckon the participants had ex exited through the storeroom just as I had done said. Hmm. Miss Jensen, what were your actions after the auction resumed? I took the victim's place and participated in the auction. The conductor instructed me to win the bid for the costume trunk. Because the body was inside it. It would have been bad if another auction guest won the bid for it. You didn't realize the box was empty? No, we only found out when I came up to the storeroom to pay the bill. Did they actually make her pay, too? <laughs> That's even worse. That's terrible. All right, I need you to do this stuff. You're paying for this expensive Stupid Sir Topham trip. hat. Why could yeah. you, how could you do this? <laughs> the conductor was with me and told me to go search for her immediately. And then I found another girl collapsed in front of the ladder. Okay. Okay. Yes. She probably fell down from the roof and lost consciousness. You know, I've been thinking about that the whole time. I was like, how did she find her? Was it like the nurse is just wandering the streets looking for people unconscious? <laughs> no, she probably saw her. Maybe the victim left the hatch open when she went up the rooftop. I understand now. Kay was surprised at seeing the collapsed victim and did not notice the open hatch. She must have missed her footing and fell down into the storeroom. Miss Hart, I have determined the sound that made you faint. It was likely the sound of Kay falling onto the storeroom floor. That might be it. Though I reckon it kind of be pathetic to faint over something like that. When Miss Jensen found the unconscious Kay, Miss Hart was also unconscious behind the statue. The situation is becoming clearer to me. Miss Jensen, please continue your story. After I found Kay and the victim, I put them both in the trunk. The victim, like, the bleeding dead victim. And Kay, yeah, apparently. Let's just put them both in the trunk. It'll be great. Yeah. If the customers at the auction found out, there would have been a huge commotion. Was this an order from the conductor as well? Yes, it was. But since I secretly decided to put the raincoat on Miss Crane, I had to dispose of the raincoat without the conductor noticing. Heh. <laughs> so the conductor didn't anticipate the raincoat becoming another piece of evidence. I'm tired. And finally, I mean, it's like 10 o'clock. I, that's, I mean, that's when you go to bed, but I went to bed <laughs> at 2 a.m. yesterday. That's not healthy. <laughs> I know it's not, but I was really tired, and that doesn't make any sense. Um, I was up late. <coughs> we dressed Miss Crane in a spirit conductor's outfit. I see. In doing so, you made the victim appear as if she was the conductor. In the end, the auction ended without anyone noticing anything. Hmm... Miss Jensen, your crimes have become clear. If you know anything else, please hold nothing back. I want to help you more, but that's all I know. Um, if I had to say, there was just one thing that bothers me. When I took Miss Crane's place, I borrowed her clothes. But there was no way for me to borrow her hair. Ow! 
kind of corners a corner. Corner. What kind of corners assistant goes around stealing a corpse's hair? I would think that robbing the deceased of their clothes would be questionable enough. Both the color and the length of our hair is different, so I was worried about how to disguise it. However, the conductor even had a wig prepared for me. In fact, he had two of them. Inside the costume trunk, there were both a straight wig and a wavy wig. Two wigs? Why were there two? Who knows? Maybe it was a precaution in case the victim had changed her hairstyle. I ended up using the straight wig to match Miss Crane's hair. So that means the wavy wig was left unused. Karen's testimony jotted down in the organizer. Is that really all you know? Yes. Yep, that's really all I know. So that means you don't know who the conductor is. I'm sorry, I only knew the person as the auction conductor. I never saw that person without a mask on. That seems weird. The conductor seems to be on guard toward everyone. Nah! At this rate! <laughs> Edgeworth, is that all you've got? Even if that little nurse is an accomplice, it changes absolutely nothing, you know. In the end, the true culprit is still Kay Faraday. All you did was add another criminal, you know. The rule of law cannot be overturned. At least not for your sake. Is this as far as I go? Am I unable to save Kay? Objection. Objection. Wait, I got it. It was Kay. It was Francisca. I literally was like, objection. Francisca, why are you here? Didn't I tell you, Miles Edgeworth? Wherever there is a case, I will follow. Thank goodness they got the Costco-sized burritos. <laughs> and I thought she was getting Costco muffins for everybody. Prosecutor Von Karma, your hard work is most appreciated. Almost as much as these Costco muffins. <laughs> However, don't get the wrong idea. I only came here to find out the truth behind what happened to Kay Farday. I don't plan on forgiving you for abandoning the prosecutor's path. Hey, that's the name of the game. I understand. You should thank your former subordinate. He gave me some valuable information which may save K. Farday. Detective Gumshoe did. Listen well, Miles Edgeworth. This will be the final piece of evidence. You know, Francisca's pretty good at that. Yep. Because she was also the one that delivered the stuff when she had the injured shoulder. Came <laughs> running in, she's like, I know I'm dying. I don't care. Here's your stupid piece of evidence. Get on with it. Jill Crane suffered the wound on her head first. Well, someone say something! Hmm, uh, um, well, I hate to say it, but we already proved that. Already proved? Yes, well, just a few minutes ago! Ah! You should have told me sooner! You weren't here! You're the one who barged in here and started talking! Well then, does that mean you found out what the murder weapon was already? No, not yet. Hmm, is that so? In that case, listen well. The victim was struck on the head with a blunt, cylindrical object. The wound on her chest was suffered post-mortem. A cylindrical murder weapon. Objection. You know, the report of yours, I trust it's accurate, of course. These were the results of two independent autopsies, carried out by two respected doctors. Objection. That's reassuring. But it's too bad you have no right to investigate. Interpol is after the black market auctions, and I'm the prosecutor in charge of the investigation. The victim participated in the auction- <laughs> It looks like the best just got debested. Oh, I was gonna say he got debut. <laughs> oh, I like debested. Okay. The victim participated in the auction, therefore it's only natural for me to investigate. Especially now that she's been murdered. I see, I see. Clever girl, little Von Karma. Then it has been settled. The victim died from a blunt force trauma to the head. Like every other game! It happens like once per game. Every- t 
I swear, I feel like half of these... Except in the first game where it was twice. I was about to say, I feel like half of these are like, Blunt Force trauma to head. My favorite You game. always say that, and every time I'm like, this case and 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 this case didn't have it. And you're like, well, it just feels like it. It feels like it because you keep talking about it. That's not true. I do keep talking about it, but that's not why it feels like it. Unfortunately, the murder weapon is yet to be found. Heh. Just knowing the shape of the murder weapon gives me an idea as to what it might be. Hey, hey! In my investigation, we didn't find any other murder weapons, you know! If you consider the conductor's possessions and the crime scene, the answer should be clear. Who was with the gavel? The blunt cylindrical object used in the auction hall was... Judge Courtney's gavel, an auction gavel, a judge's gavel. Wait, if we say Judge Courtney's gavel, will she kill us? Yes. She, we die and it's a bad end. I want to see it. Judge Courtney, the murder weapon is your gavel. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I'm not sure what you're trying to say. But if you're suspecting me, then why don't you examine it up close and personal? Th that, that won't be necessary, as I thought that was wrong. <laughs> what am I doubting myself for? <laughs> Just what is the murder weapon in this case? <laughs> it was a, the auction gavel. It was something the conductor had in their hand during the auction. Namely, an auction gavel. An auction gavel? We didn't find anything like that! If the culprit is the conductor, it is possible that the gavel may be the murder weapon. However, that alone is not reason enough, wouldn't you agree? Of course, I have proof to back it up. This piece of evidence proves that the murder weapon is the auction gavel. Well, Mata testified about it. According to Miss Hart's testimony, after the victim had been murdered, it seems she suddenly stopped hearing the sound of the gavel during the auction. However, she had been able to hear it up until then. Why was that, you ask? It was because it had been used as the murder weapon and was covered in the victim's blood. It became necessary to dispose of it. Isn't that right? Blaze de best! I'll have a search for the murder weapon per performed immediately. Check Blaze's house. <laughs> Check his beard. You can oh, hide anything oh, oh, in there. Oh, how did this kid? I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I don't believe what's in my beard. Gavels. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck with that, you know. You've got to work as hard as you can while you're young, you see. He's completely confident that we won't find it. It's cause... He burned it. Well then, while the search for the murder weapon continues, I hereby call for a brief recess. It's about time. Finally? I believe this is now the final part of the case. That makes sense, now that we've seen the people that I've been hoping to see. Yep. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. Exciting times. We'll be Exciting continuing times. searching for the murder weapon. Maybe... <laughs> talking with blaze a little more oh maybe boy. we'll find it in his beard <laughs> i was about to say there are so many things you could hide in that beard just like how Akron well hid. she doesn't even have a beard she doesn't even have a beard oh my gosh <laughs> anyhow until we meet again my friends have a great day and god bless